Hi, my name's Diane. You're currently watching the Just Kidding Around show. Thank you so much for joining us. Each week, we introduce our home viewers to different crafts and hobbies that can be enjoyed by the entire family. This week, I am thrilled to have a new guest on. Her name is Stacy, and Stacy is going to teach us the art of crocheting, which is amazing because this program's been on 20 years and we have never had a program on crocheting. So welcome, Stacy. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. My pleasure to be here. And Stacy is also extra special because she is a producer here at TCTV. Yeah, I work on uh, Tea Time in Olympia, which is a program focusing on LGBT issues, especially those issues affecting the transgender community. And we're a monthly program on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. You can Great. catch us and on YouTube. Wonderful. So you can watch her show. And our show is on every Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Excellent. Well, before we get started, we usually look in the camera and say hello to somebody. And we have a lot of great people working on the show. So I would like to give a shout out to everybody that um, is working so hard to put this show together. A lot of volunteers. And a shout out to Freddie, who sh sh uh, set up the live streaming before he left. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I guess I'm going to give a shout out to my son, Sam. It's his birthday today. So okay. happy birthday, buddy. And uh, to Max Brown, I want to wish him a lot of luck. He's a uh, staff person here at the TV studio that's given us a whole lot of help on our show. And he's taking a new position here in another week or so down in Portland at a col art college down there. And so we want to wish him a whole lot of luck. Wow. We're, we're really thrilled for him and really happy that that um, he's yeah. taken a step forward. So. Thanks for that update. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Well, look at this table. It's filled with things. I don't know where to start. So why don't you start, Stacy? Okay. And I'll just ask questions. And but but may I ask you if we could start with this pile? Would that be fair? Sure. Okay. Um, what I have on the table is a variety of different types of yarns and threads that are used for crocheting. And first of all, crocheting, unlike knitting, is done with a hook. And as you can see, it has they come in a huge variety of styles, but they all are just basically along with a hook. Okay. And the different sizes produce a different hole size when you're crocheting. So some of the hooks are extremely small and tiny and would go with like a tiny thread like this. And some of them are really big and bulky and you would use on a big bulky thread like this. Okay, may, may I stop and ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'd like to know which is easier, knitting or crocheting, or is that a fair question? You know, it's a fair question. It, I think crocheting is easier. I think it's easier because you just got your one hook and you can pick it up and set it down. You don't have to worry about dropping stitches off of a long needle. You don't have to worry about ending a row halfway through, having your stitches slip off of anything. The hard part of crochet is getting your tension consistent oh. so that everything turns out the same size and that it's easy to work with. Do you, have to, worry about, do you have to worry about tension with knitting? Um, not as much, no. So you do you both? You do, but you don't. I do a little bit of knitting, but I really like to crochet. Okay. So, yeah, I could, I could do a basic knitting demonstration, but I can do more with crocheting. All right, so, so. for a beginner, if there's somebody in our audience that's mm -hmm. just starting, which is where I am on, on this, okay. would it be easier for us to start a project with a large size needle or a little tiny thing like this that you can hardly it see? It depends on the yarn that you're going to use. If you're going to, I, I think that this is a good yarn to start with. It's a uh, cotton thread. This is Sugar and Cream brand. It makes things like this uh, washcloth. And these are all washcloths. This is a, um, believe it or not, a, a scrunchie. So when you're when you want you just oh tie gosh. it all together and put a and tie a bow in it and then you use it in the bathroom in the shower like a scrunchie for if you have sensitive skin or whatever. I thought that went around your neck. And then you can pull it apart uh, later and and dry it out all in a long and loop it around your shower. Okay. Head and dry and it can, out. And so. can I tell the audience? I just learned about this from Stacy before the tape started rolling, and. Um, 
this is something you actually can wash dishes with and there's different textures here. Right. Very clever. I thought it was a fish. Well, it looks what like is a, a fish, fish, but yeah. But I it's love the different shape. textures. Yeah, the texture is nice and that's one of the nice things about crocheting is that if you can see um, from the opening shot we did of the uh, bumblebee uh, hive, mm -hmm. that it's sitting on top of what looks like a whole bunch of leaves. And in the uh, at Christmas time, we put that in the center of a table with a big taper candle on it, and it's a centerpiece for the table. Oh, I think they have a picture of it. Right. Thank it you very much. Waldo's of, um, got that up there on the yeah, screen. Yeah, so it, it has a lot of texture to it, and um, you can do a lot of, you can shape it, you can do pretty much anything you want with uh, crochet, I think. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, where do you get your ideas? Um, I have some books. All I right. have, um, this book came out actually the year I was born. Oh I'm not going to tell you how old that is. No, no, we don't. But it's just a simple how-to book. Aww. And this is the latest book that I got. It's um, just got just amazingly beautiful oh. different motifs in it where you can choose to... I, I mean, just amazing different things that yeah. you can make. So really, they have, you go through the craft store, they have free instructions. I like a place online called Ravelry, R-A-V-E-L-R-Y.com. Okay. And it's a free subscription. You just log in with your email, and they have free patterns and people there that can help and just an amazing wow. a, a variety of things that you can get free for downloading. And, and most of the places like um, uh, Red Heart and uh, those companies online, Bernetta, um, they have a lot of patterns, free patterns on their sites mm -hmm. and projects. Okay. So. And um, then what, what you were going to talk to us a little yeah, bit? Yeah, you, you asked me um, on the phone when we talked about granny squares. All right. And making afghans that come in pieces and working squares. And so these are just some some squares. And let me show you. This is a traditional granny square. Yes, my Nana and, used to make those. Right. It's, this is done in warm colors. So it's yellow, orange, red. This is a granny square that's done in more of a cool shade in the pr blue, purple. And you can see that they, that they look different when you put them next to each other, even though they are exactly the same square. Mm -hmm. And this is a variation of a granny square. It, it has um, double crochet, single crochet, it has some puff stitching, it has some open work here where you skip a couple stitches. This is a square that is all single crochet. So it goes around and it looks really quite different from a granny square. So there's right. a lot of different ways you can make squares. And behind us, the um, beautiful afghan here my mother made, and oh. it's, it's a hexagon. So it's flowers inside of a hexagon, so and it's all put granny together. So is granny square just sort of a, a term used for squares that are put together to make an afghan? Or is there a component in all of them that qualifies yeah, there, them there to... is, it is kind of a generic term. However, this is a traditional granny. That's what I think of. This is when, when it's a granny this square. So this much. is a, yeah. No, but in the Woman's Day book of granny squares, that was that listed. Hexagons are there. Oh my god. And goodness. you can um, you can they have um, nowadays it's popular to crochet circles and then put corners on them. Oh my goodness. At the edges, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of granny square variations out there. So or square variations. How long? I mean, I know it's hard to estimate, but but each one of these squares took uh, hexagons took uh -huh. about how long? I make. would say probably an hour, maybe, to make. And see, for me, it could take a week. I don't know, but an yeah. hour. And and look how each one of those, we kind of take for granted how each one yeah. of those is exactly the same size. Right, and that's really key and important. I was going to say, for a beginner, yeah. it seems like... <laughs> and it is really hard for a beginner to get that. It's kind of like, I and I know this, how, if you've ever quilted anything, mm -hmm. when you put a quilt together, if, if they don't line up, if they're off a little bit, then everything gets cattywampus, and it just takes a little oh, bit yeah. of, a, of it not being lined up to get it out of control, get it out of control and make it kind yeah. of wonky, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't lay right when you put it out there. So we take a lot for granted with this. Right. And so how right. long do you think the whole thing probably took? Oh, my mom made that. She would 
pick it up and then set it down yeah. and pick it up and set it down. I have no problem making the squares. Uh -huh. They just fly by, uh -huh. but I hate sewing them together. That's just oh, really, yeah. oh my I God, could appreciate it just kills that. me. Do you sew it with the machine or do you sew it? No, you sew it with the, you either can hook? use a crochet hook and crochet them together uh -huh. or a yarn needle and literally oh, yarn, sew the loops yeah. together. Um, this is called a bobble stitch. I like that one. And I, I like this one I too. Like I did this one. This is where the, it, it's a study of dark and bright and contrast. Oh, they have a close up right now. Thank you. Of her, her mother. My mom made that. Her After. mom made that, and her mom has since passed away. And mm -hmm. what a legacy, what a thing to pass on. You know, I love that. Then that it's functional, right. and it has her DNA all over it. I mean, she's yeah. probably smiling wherever she is, because that, that's, it it's really on TV. It really is beautiful, yeah, <laughs> and it's really beautiful. It is beautiful, it's so colorful and happy. Yeah. And it's got about every color, so you could decorate your bedroom and whatever. Or Afghans aren't necessarily for bedrooms, are they? No, you can use them anywhere, Women, and and I think that, um, but it's true that color can really date an afghan. Oh. And you can tell, um, you know, I've been crocheting for a really long time. When mm -hmm. I first started, the first afghan I made Orange. came from a kit from the Montgomery Ward catalog. Oh my gosh. And it was in, you know, burnt oranges. Yeah, and, I was gonna say, and brown, brown and gold and, you know, all well, that thing, and then, um, I have afghans and stuff from the 80s that are all done in pastels and oh. the, the blues and purples and oh. the the, the uh, desert southwest uh -huh. no motifs were really popular oh, back then. Yeah. And, um, so this is these squares were all made from this an, is beautiful. an afghan that I made um, for a friend of mine has uh, three children uh -huh. and I made each one a blanket and I wanted to have a variety of colors. So that's where all of these, oh, that's these sweet. are scrap afghans, so I use scraps from all of that. So if you look at that, you hold yours up and I'll hold mine up. This is the exact same stitch in the exact same needle, the yeah. exact same size, but they kind of come out, they look very different. Yeah, they do. And so choosing the, the colors that you choose, uh -huh. the hook that you choose, it all makes a big difference but when you're putting boy, together a pattern. But if you're not consistent, I mean, with something like this, mm -hmm. if you're if you're not consistent, then the stripe. What if it's a lot wider on the next one or narrower? It seems yeah, like you've got to really be consistent on that. Yeah, you know, you do. And this is kind of off the subject, but in the old days, you know, in the old agrarian society, and the man was out tilling the fields, and the woman was home cooking, mm -hmm. and. And you know, you think about how they could raise a house so quickly, but I think that quilts and things like that that were being made by the women mm -hmm. were, I hate to say, well, it's, it's not that I don't appreciate one more than the other, but I think it probably took as much time and as much work and as much perfection. You know, you I think? think it does, I really do. My um, grandmother used to talk about her grandmother would get up in the morning and cook breakfast for the entire family before daylight so they could go out and milk the cows. And there would be all of the kids and the filled hands coming in. And then they, as soon as that got cleaned up, it was cooking lunch and taking it yeah. out to the field. And then it, she would come back. And if they had any time at all, she never sat down. She, if she sat down, she would go in so and she would pick sewing. up her darning basket yeah. or working on a quilt square or yeah. darning clothes or crocheting something or, you know, it just never to stopped. To make the to make blankets to keep everybody exactly. warm. So exactly. now it's a craft, yeah. but back then it was a necessity. Absolutely, you absolutely. Know. And that's, I learned from people who, who literally had to make their own blankets and their own things, so. Because you don't hear about many people like that anymore. Well, no, but then things I are... learned from really old people who were really old. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> No. These what? squares are... These are beautiful. And these squares are the same. This is called a crossover stitch. And you can see it is the same yarn. One is the crossover stitch is done in all green and the and with the color in the back. This one here is done all green Just the with, a, with a color, with a single crochet line. And in this one, the cross stitch is done in color with the green and so you can see that it makes a totally different look. Mm -hmm. So even though they're the same color, how you, the same yarn, how you put the colors together matters. makes a difference and it matters. Yeah. And that's one of the funnest parts of crocheting is when you get a pattern at a store, 
you can follow the pattern and buy the yarn that they tell you to buy and the colors that they tell you to buy it, or you can show your own creativity and you can put it together in the way that you want to put mm -hmm. it together and choose the colors that you like doing. And you know something? Did I miss, did you actually learn from this book or did somebody teach you? This was your first book. Um, no, well, actually I you? learned to crochet from my great aunt Lola Agron from Chehalis. Oh, Lola, who, what yeah. a name. And um, I grew up uh, actually in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh -huh. And my great aunt came to visit us when I was a little girl and she oh. taught me to uh, just do a real basic crochet stitch. Um, and my mother knew how to crochet and so she helped me um, learn and so and that was your mother's sister. And no, my your mother's, mother's aunt. Aunt, your mother's mm -hmm. aunt. My mother's okay. aunt, and mm -hmm. my uh, my grandmother, my mother, my. Oh, um, so you're from a long line. Yeah, they all knew how to crochet. So it's I just something that we passed around a lot of it, really. Yeah. So this is a book on how to do all sorts of things: knitting, crocheting, tatting. Oh, all of it. All of that and is in that little book. And it's black and white and boring. Yeah, but I'm it's sorry. okay. No, but it but I like it's this it helps book you. Better. You know? <laughs> This and one these looks more are interesting. Yeah, here, can you hand me those other little books? Sure. My grandmother used to have a. Um, this is a book from um, the 1970s. As you can see, she's got a really groovy uh, granny square <laughs> skirt on. Oh my gosh! And I never knew uh, they were crochet. Granny square yeah, skirt. yeah, this is a work they basket from clothes? 1958. These are 77, 71. Oh, these so are just. Um, my grandmother would have these delivered to her house uh, every month. Aww. She would get a new one. It had some new kind of thing that you could try. It has all sorts of um, just funky, funny little things in there. Yeah, a beautiful crocheted shawl. It is so um, special that you saved. So I have all of these. these. I have, um, for example, I say this is from 1981. I thought this was a very special little Aww. Um, blanket with little hat and oh, you know all what? Those kinds of that things that'd I, be you know. special today. I don't know if they can get it. Right? A, wouldn't that be a great? Yeah, that gift? would never go out of style. No, that would never you know. go out of style. Eighty-one. Yeah, years yeah, old? from nineteen eighty-one. That's thirty yeah, years Yeah, I know. So, but boy, if, if you have a baby in your family, right. that'd be. And look at this old baby in that. Yeah, I know. So you know, you save these things, oh, and adorable. over the years they come back. Yeah. This was probably Somebody told me bell bottoms. Um, Just today, I found out bell bottoms are coming back. Yeah. You bet. This is a uh, the Woman's Day Book of Granny Squares. Okay. So this is one of the things I learned to uh, make all different granny squares. But no, wait, uh, that granny squares aren't just for Afghans. Can't they be a pot holder? Yeah. Could I just make this and stop? And you say know, here's you, a pot holder? You know, you could, you could. If you were going to do a granny square uh, pot holder or mm -hmm. a square pot holder, mm -hmm. I would recommend using the all cotton yarn because it won't melt if you put something really <gasps> hot on oh, it. Oh, I never thought of because that. Because this is an acrylic yarn. I, I love these Super Saver, Red Heart Super Savers. It's a really nice sport weight yarn, mm -hmm. but you definitely don't want to use this if you're going to be putting it near heat because it, it's acrylic. Okay. So you want to use something like a natural fiber cotton, um, and you want to make sure that you, um, sometimes what you can do when you make a pot holder mm -hmm. is you make the pot holder and then you crochet the two two squares together around the edges and oh, you make get a, a double, double thickness. thickness. Okay. So that gives you a little bit more um, okay. heat protection. They have fabric now that, you know, what is it, Kevlar that you or the heat resistant oh. stuff that you buy at the fabric store. Okay. So if you were to cut a square of that and, and sandwich it between it. Oh. And then you know, stitch okay. it in there, that, and that would you, probably work. What do you call and, something that you put under a plant or under what's that? I, I can't think I of the word know. right now. A, a doily, a, tivet a, or a, a trivet, 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 trivet. Yeah, you could do that with it. Okay. Coasters for your table. Yeah. yeah. So um, you could. Sure. And that one All of that. magazine you just showed me turned it into a skirt. Yeah. <laughs> you can use it to make skirts, <laughs> sweaters. <laughs> Um, jackets. You can, oh, I mean, they sweater, have also, yeah. The uh, Granny Square book has a section in it that, was that so shows funny. you um, all sorts this of one? things. Uh huh. I love that skirt. Did they get a close up of that? That was funny. I think the Granny Square skirts in here, but that like, might be here's kind a of section. Uh, they have 
Slippers, ties, sweaters, hats. Hats. Um, uh, slippers. I jacket. don't know who you could ever um, get to wear that tie, though. Well, you know, there's some guys that do. I definitely have worn those slippers. I made that jacket. Okay. Um, and that dog you know, outfit. I, yeah, a little <laughs> dog sweater. I mean, you can just do pretty much anything with them. Oh, funny. Um, this is not Granny Squares, but this is a book, the big uh, Learn to Crochet in a Weekend. That's what it says. But... Um, I don't know if we can find a... Learn to crochet in a weekend. Oh. Yeah, here's a capelet. Oh, that's nice. And uh, they just have a, just a whole variety of things. Here's a little sweater. That is pretty, I like that. Um, yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff. Here's children's clothing. Now, uh, what's a copyright of this one, do you know? Is it more current than the... I believe this one's probably more current. Okay. Yeah, Just I'm curious. pretty sure I got this one within the last. Do you know um, what I've heard about crocheting? Years. I've heard it's very uh, meditative. It, Does it's, that make sense? it is really calming and repetitive, calming. and you really, that's once you get the hang of it. While you're getting the hang of it, it can be kind of irritating. Yeah, I could get that. Yeah, it could be kind of irritating. <laughs> and so when you make things like this is a. Uh, baby booty kind of sock. Darling. You make it out of baby yarn. Okay. Just a really, really super small. You would use um, one of these hooks here that is much smaller to get the proper size for that. Um, and this is a really large yarn. It's almost like a polar fleece material that's been extruded into a yarn instead of made flat. Feels, so it's I like the really feel of warm. It. It's really soft. It's really fuzzy. Have fibers and come a long way? Fibers are, have come a long yeah. way, and they're really different. This is a uh, a really soft, frothy yarn. Oh, I love it's, it. It's still pretty big. It's not quite as big as this one, but it it's like still a large. Bath robe or something. Yeah, it does. It feels like a chenille, yeah. kind of a chenille bedspread or yeah. a soft. Um, what? Tell thing. me the story of these. I love. I love fingerless gloves. These are made um, flat. They're made in one piece and they're flat. So when you start them, you do slip stitches in the back stitch and then some single crochets and then uh, slip stitch. And then come back down and you make your thumb piece. I'd like to do a show then, just on making these. Sure, and then you do the palm piece and it's really, it's, you know, twice as wide as this, yeah. and then you get to the other side and you make another thumb, and then you fold it in half oh, and, and you sew you it up it this side and then sew it. it up there. Is that the way these are always made? Or just well, that's the way I make them. I love I'm them. I'm sure you could make them around, but I like to make them that way because when you do the slip stitch in the back stitch, it looks like you've got a rib. Got it. So, um, do you know what some people call these? Texting gloves. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I think that's funny. You know what, yeah. Stacy? something just happened I couldn't believe. I, we just got the warning sign to wrap it I up, know. and we haven't, haven't even done started. Anything, so. That is so funny. Well, maybe I can come back, and we can Well, we've show got three again. minutes, so in three minutes, what would you like to say, or could you start? Step one is buy yarn. Step one is buy yarn. Step one is how to get tension. And you start out by putting the thread over your little finger, around these fingers, and holding onto the knot with these fingers. And that leaves this edge open, and then you use the needle to hook it through and make the loops. So if, uh, you know what, our home viewers up. could do that, would you promise to come back again and give a step two? <laughs> Absolutely. I, okay. will, I would be more than happy so, to do that. So for, for them to go out and get the yarn, you've shown us about five different yarns here. Which yarn are they going to go out and buy? What do they do? Um, I would buy one like this, a nice sport weight, or one like this. If you want to start off with something like a washcloth, which is pretty easy. Yeah. And um, I, I would I look would for do. things that are on sale. I would see if anybody has um, any yarn that they can give you that they're not using anymore, just Smart a scrap thinking. to practice on. You can buy crochet hooks in uh, groups like this, or you can buy them one at a time. Okay. I recommend getting a nice G hook. A G. A G, like George. G. And a G Why hook. did you say that? Which one is um, G? Is this, this is G? a, nope, this is a G hook. It's, it Why is the right it? size for this yarn. Ah. And it is a pretty universal in patterns. It's, it's sort of the, 
go-to hook for many, many patterns. Okay. So it's a good hook to learn on. And just try YouTube. I mean, if you go to YouTube and say how to crochet, it will it will tell you, yeah. It, Once again. It, so you lay your hand down and you put it through your finger from the palm side and okay. then you squeeze your finger a little bit and bring it around and then you hold it between your, your okay. ring finger or your uh, middle finger and your thumb and that helps stabilize everything. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it out of your hand. I know okay. this is being rude. So no, go ahead. looking at your palm, putting lie this over the uh -huh. palm, bring it up under your other three fingers uh -huh. around here, and I'm gonna work on some sort of tension. Well, when you, oh, I feel no, you something. don't want it. You want to hold it with with one of these fingers. One of those fingers. Okay. And then when you and were they and supposed then, to tie a loop there? There's. A I loop tie there? a loop at the end of my yarn just to okay. make it. And then. When you, yeah, here, hold it with your finger where the bottom loop is, and then you use your, your other hand to hold the loop, nope, at the knot. You know what? You might have to tune in later for the rest yeah, of this. Yeah, okay? yeah. Try YouTube. So How to this, crochet on YouTube yeah, is another good you. one, yeah. Look for us on YouTube, too. We're, are you yeah. on YouTube? Which, where, where do they go on YouTube? Um, on, we're on Tea Time in Olympia is okay. our YouTube, but we don't do craft stuff on that. Okay, but but you could go to Just Kidding Around, Diane Miller, and find uh -huh. this show again. And uh, you always have permission to tape our shows even though we're wrapping it up now. Yeah. But Stacy's gonna come back and teach us more. Sure you so she's kinda introduced us now and get yourself before our next show, get a hook, possibly a G hook. Uh -huh. And I love your idea about looking for things at garage sales or Yeah, really, because you're just sale. practicing and before you do before you invest in a bunch of yarn for a big project, Got I it. really recommend that you just get I'm using scrap yarn right now to Got work it. on this project. So. Well, thank you, Stacy, for right, joining Diane, us. Thanks no to a fabulous crew. Uh, we appreciate you donating your time, and there's chicken in the lobby. Bye. Thanks, and join us again Saturdays, and we're on Sundays and Wednesday night, too. Thanks to our okay. audience.